Okay, so let's keep dealing with the SN2 and SN1 mechanisms. And what I want to talk about right now is some things that affect the rate of the SN2 and SN1 um, mechanisms or reactions that go through those mechanisms. So we're going to talk about the solvent, which is probably all we'll get to in this video. Um, leaving group quality, which we'll talk about tomorrow in class. Substitution at, a react at the reactor site, which just simply means what substituents are there at the reactor site and nucleophile quality which we'll also talk about in class tomorrow so remember for the SN2 it's a one step um, concerted mechanism here that's the rate determining step where the nucleophile comes in and attacks and then you lose your leaving group no intermediate the step is concerted and for this particular type of reaction that goes through a SN2 mechanism the, uh, the type of solvent that is good for this reaction is a polar aprotic solvent right so polar aprotic solvents increase the rate these reactions are slow with polar protic solvents and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit All right so what about the SN1 mechanism if a reaction goes through the SN1 mechanism where you lose your leaving group first and then form a carbocation then the nucleophile comes in and attacks that All right. Um, that particular mechanism is uh, enhanced by polar protic solvents. So polar protic solvents increase the rate for a reaction that goes through a SN1 mechanism. It's slow in polar aprotic solvents. So let's look at what we're talking about here with these protic and aprotic solvents. So an aprotic solvent is basically a solvent that cannot donate a proton or H+. That's what aprotic means no protons all right so examples of polar aprotic solvents are acetone uh, ethyl acetate acetyl nitrile dmf uh, dichloromethane and then thf what you'll notice with all of these particular solvents is they have a uh, especially the solvents here right the ones that contain a carbonyl they actually have uh, a part that is partially positive and partially negative so for acetone for instance the carbon here would be partially positive and then the oxygen here would be partially negative same thing with ethyl acetate with the nit acetyl nitrile the carbon here is partially positive and then the nitrogen is partially negative that's what makes them polar because they have that charge separation where they have a uh, part of the solvent being positive and the other part being negative Okay, so polar protic solvents are the exact opposite of uh, polar aprotic solvents in that polar protic solvents are able to donate H+. Right? So solvents like acetic acid, any alcohol will be considered uh, protic solvents like methanol, ethanol, isopropanol. Uh, water is definitely a protic solvent. And then uh, other acids that are not necessarily, not carboxylic acids like acetic acid, like sulfuric acid or a uh, phosphoric acid. Any solvent that can give up H+, we call it a protic solvent. All right, so let's look at an example of a SN2 uh, reaction or a reaction that goes through a SN2 mechanism. All right, so you have the methoxy anion here reacting with bromomethane. So let's look at the arrows. We looked at this already. Let's just look at it again. So the nucleophile comes in, the leaving group leaves, and now I have a, a new bond between oxygen and carbon, which I have here in my product. So proto, polar protic solvents slow the SN2 reaction down. Remember I told you earlier that polar aprotic solvents speed the reaction up. Uh, well, polar protic solvents slow it down. Um, the reason polar protic solvents slow the reaction down is because they uh, solvate the nucleophile, right? And they make the nucleophile sluggish and less reactive. So what is solvation? That's the process by which solvent molecules surround and interact with uh, the solute ions or molecules. And it usually makes the uh, ion that, that the solvent reacts with more stable. Right. So here's my solvent. Notice it's got a positive end and a negative end. And so if this is, if the uh, solute or whatever is in the solvent is positive, then the negative end of the solvent is just going to kind of line itself up around that plus charge that's what we call solvation 
if the molecule that's in solution is negative or has a negative charge then the positive parts the positive ends of the solvent are going to line up around the molecule and uh, solvate it and normally when something gets solvated the energy decreases All right, so solvation uh, causes a decrease in energy for whatever that solvent is surrounding alright so let's look at why this is slower we said that earlier that protic solvents solvate the nucleophile alright so here's my nucleophile and let's look at what happens so the nucleophile is here and if I do this reaction in a protic solvent then those protons that are given off by that solvent just surround the nucleophile right and solvate it alright so why are protic solvents bad for the SN2 let's go back they solvate the nucleophile and they it, I said a second ago that if the nucleophile gets solvated or whatever is being solvated it's going to be decreased it's going to have uh, its energy is going to be decreased so let's look at here here's a reaction energy diagram remember that the rate of reaction is, is for SN2 is the rate constant here K times the concentration of the nucleophile and the concentration of the substrate so here here's my nucleophile here's my substrate and then as they react you know the nucleophile and substrate disappear and become products so remember the rate expression here alright so here is a different view okay so here's the reaction the green curve is the reaction in an aprotic solvent meaning that uh, right the reaction happens in an aprotic solvent here's the activation energy right uh, for that reaction to happen in an aprotic solvent so it's the SN2 type reaction and they remember aprotic solvents favor that type reaction alright so here's the curve here's the activation energy the minute I put the same reactants in a protic solvent what happens is my nucleophile gets solvated I showed you that on the earlier slide and when that happens the energy of the nucleophile is decreased so now my nucleophile is all the way down here right look at the activation energy now what happened to it the nu activation energy increased because the energy of the nucleophile got decreased right so this is protic right and this is aprotic so in a protic solvent when that nucleophile is solvated then the energy of the nucleophile drops and the activation energy increases right so let me, let's let me show you how this really happens so let's say I'm at the club this is me I'm the nucleophile right don't hit on the ice either that's real all right so I'm the nucleophile and let's say my wife is also there and this is the substrate now in a in a aprotic solvent notice we're on the same level right we can interact right now because um, our energy is equal right when we're starting off at the same place but the minute I switch to a protic solvent right here's the protic solvent it surrounds me and keeps me from getting to the substrate now if you think about if you've ever been to a club and you run into a person that you really don't want to see that's the protic solvent right right here so the protic solvent has now solvated me and it's keeping me from getting to my wife so I'm, I'm more sluggish now I don't want to react now because I'm surrounded by this solvent so it's keeping me from getting here to the substrate so now my energy is lower and it's going to take a lot longer for this reaction to happen all right I hope that made sense all right so what's next we're going to study leaving group quality tomorrow uh, substitution at the reactor site and all of this is going to happen tomorrow in class all right as always if you have any questions you can tweet you can email or you can drop by my office peace